primarily because she was at a standpoint, primarily because it was at a standpoint in her life where she was beyond the age of childbearing. Yeah. When we learned of Sarah, she was already 65 years old. That's right. I don't know that anyone would volunteer to have a baby right, right, right. at 65 years old. Right, right. But because she had been there in her whole life, this was still a desire that yes. she had. Mm -hmm. She still had a desire to bring forth ch children or a child. Understanding this from a developmental standpoint, Sarah was significantly beyond the years thought traditionally to coincide with childbirth. As women, we can understand the importance that is tied to being a mother. This meaning and the meaning that it has and its cause toward our womanhood. Well, for Sarah, she was a wife, she was beautiful, and she was noted to be faithful. Mm -hmm. However, in all of this, she was still there. I would have to imagine that this state of barrenness weighed heavily, heavily on Sarah. For on some level, she had to question her womanhood. She had to question her usefulness to her husband. She was obviously tortured by her childlessness. Every recorded episode of ill temper or strife in her household was related to her frustrations and her own, of her own barrenness. It ate at her. Yes. It tortured her. Mm -hmm. It was that thing that she slept with, mm -hmm. that she got up with, that she walked around with. She carried it. It was a burden, if you will. Mm -hmm. She spent years in the grip of frustration and depression because of it. Mm -hmm. She desperately wanted to be a mother. So she finally concluded that God himself had restrained her from bringing forth child. Mm -hmm. If we look into the uh, in Genesis 16 and 2, we're gonna we're gonna take it in part. This this um, verse in part. In the first part, it says, "So Sarah said to Abram, Now behold, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Mm -hmm. Now, based on my profession as a psychologist." I would have to imagine that in her fleshly state, mm -hmm. Sarah felt feelings of inadequacy, yeah. mm -hmm. inferiority, and even um, inadequacy as it relates to being a woman. She felt a comparable weakness mm -hmm. when thinking of how she measured up to other women. Mm -hmm. Well, we've all been there, right? That's mm -hmm. right. We're going to be honest with one another. Mm -hmm. Our good girlfriend get a new man. Come mm on. -hmm. We get a little upset. Like, what's she doing again? What is she doing? <laughs> <laughs> she comes driving to church in her new BMW. Come on. Come on. Talking about how God has blessed her. We look and say, well, why God ain't blessed me? I'm at the same right. church she's at every Sunday. We're sitting up under the same word. That's why right. hasn't God blessed me? Why? I have to imagine that Sarah started to do the same yes. thing. She got a baby. She got a baby. Why can't I have a baby? And at 65, she's been carrying that thing for a long time. Yeah. She's been carrying that thing for a long time. We know how it feels that we got an issue that we've been carrying for a week. We get up and we start crying out, and Lord, why don't you take this off of me? She's been barren for 65 years. Wow. Wow. I ain't been wow. here 65 years, and I know that's a long time. Wow. So imagine carrying a thing as long as she's carrying. Yes. If we look at our lives and um, look how we compare to Sarah, there are times when we feel inadequate. Mm -hmm. There are times when we feel inferior, inferior to our friends, inferior to our family, inferior to women of God in ministry. Mm -hmm. In these moments, our flesh has the opportunity to rise up. Yeah. If we stay in that very moment, our flesh will do things that we are not pleased with. Our flesh will start feeling things that are consistent with jealousy, envy, sadness, and even despair. The danger of feeling this way is that 
we are allowing our flesh to lead us and we are yielding to its urgings and its temptations. Jesus. Sister Robin told us earlier about temptation. That's right. And so yes. when our flesh is weak, Jesus. we begin to yield to those things that will eventually make us sin. Yes. That's right. We speak out of character. Uh -huh. We act out of character. Jesus. And more damaging, we act in ways that are not becoming to the place that God is calling mm -hmm. us to. And so, Sarai was no different. Although in Genesis 12, 1 and 3, where it reads, Now the Lord said to Abram, mm -hmm. Go forth from your country, mm -hmm. and from your relatives, and from your father's house, to the land which I will show you. Mm -hmm. And I will make you a great nation. Yes. And I will bless you, mm -hmm. and make your name great. Mm -hmm. And so you shall be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I will bless those who bless you, and the ones who curse you will I curse. Mm -hmm. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Sarah heard that. Yeah. She knew that. She knew that Abram was her husband. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told her, told Abram that he was going to make him a great nation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did Sarah believe it? Yes, she did. She was a very faithful woman. But again, she yielded to her flesh. Yes, right. And so she was not able to rest in the promises of God. Jesus. And Jesus. know that because she was connected to her husband, Jesus. that she was already a party Jesus. to the promise. Jesus. Jesus. And so because we don't always understand our position in the promise, we don't always understand where God is taking us in the thing, we start to meddle around. Jesus. That's exactly what Sarah did. Jesus. She started meddling around and what God had already said. Jesus. God said he was going to make a nation Jesus. come forth through Abraham. Now she's connected to Abraham, right? I'm connected to my husband. If the Lord tells my husband we're going to open up 50 Harold's chickens in the Chicago land area, that means that I'm going to be connected to that well. Because I'm connected to him. That's right. If I believe that our covenant is what it is, everything that he's going to bless him with is going to flow to me. Everything that he's going to bless me with that Sarah was already a part of it. Yes, but she didn't, she didn't stop there. She started meddling. Remember, she'd been carrying this thing, she's barren it for 65 years. So now, being barren, she started thinking, how is God going to bring forth a nation with my husband if I can't have no kids? And she did what we do. She get her wheels turning. She let her mind take over. Uh -huh. She let her flesh take over. Come on. And she right. start men. Right. Yeah. She start putting her hand somewhere. Her special yeah. hand yeah. somewhere where it ain't supposed to be. Yeah. This is just speaking in, in spiritual terms. The hand means power. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sarai took power into her own hand. That was already established by God when the covenant was made. Yeah. But she goes forth and says, I'm going to fix this thing. What does she do? <laughs> what does she do? She was being controlled by her flesh, and this is what uh, made her realize that she could not produce that which she believed was a part of the nation that was going to come forth. So in the B portion of Genesis 16 and 2, she sends her husband into sleep with her handmaid in hopes of giving him what she could not get him, give him, a child. Sarah says, please go in, my maid. Perhaps I will obtain children through her. Mm -hmm. This is where it is crystal clear mm -hmm. that Sarah has lost hope mm -hmm. and her barrenness she has clouded her better judgment. Mm -hmm. Not only did she say go in and have, uh, go in with her, she confuses that thing and says, maybe I will have a child. And so again, I gotta put back on my psychologist hat and I have to believe that she was losing her mind. Yeah. <laughs> she was acting in a way that would suggest to her, to us, that things were out of sorts in her mind. No woman in her good mind is gonna send her husband. I ain't been married 
too long and you've been here just over seven months. Thank you, Jesus. All right. All right. But I don't think that even on my worst day, well, I know that's right. Right. I'm going to send my husband to it's sleep nobody. with anyone yeah. for any purpose. Yeah, that's right. And so we got to know that that thing that Sarah has been carrying for 65 years mm -hmm. is now tormenting her. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now it is messing with her mind. Mm -hmm. The very thing that wow. keeps us moving forward, the very place that we are able to juggle things around and do things that are either right or wrong.